All right, so let's see, what do we have here? Featured videos. Oh, here we go, perfect. Uh, let's actually, let, let's take a look at this right here. Uh, it's only uh, 16 seconds. Oh, this is their audience they're appealing to. 2,000 down votes! Oh my god! Holy shit, that's so bad! My $15 a month should go to making these available in-game. Look at this entitled fucking loser, man. Look at this entitled jackass who thinks that his money should actually go towards game development. I mean, look, I mean, he's only paid for it three times. He bought the, you know, the base game, he bought the expansion, and he's also paying monthly, and this loser can't even afford to spend an extra $77 or whatever the fuck it was for a new mount and an extra 10 bucks for a new fucking parrot pet. God, man, what a fucking loser. Hey, Blizzard, your Activision is showing. Meanwhile, Alliance gets three different shades of horses. I don't really care a lot about that, honestly. It should be a water walking mount. Okay, so people aren't very happy about this. That's really what it comes down to. No haunted guy, it actually be cancer. Oh, so I, don't, I have no idea who that is. I just thought it would be funny to, to make a joke there. Um, look at our space face video on the mount. Well, let me look at this. This is actually what I wanted to see. I, I can look at that stuff maybe later on. But this is what people really wanted me to, um, to, to look at here. Bell, your videos? Well, let me get this in here. So this is the WoW developer live stream with Ian Hazakostas. Let me read some of these before uh, I, I get into this because I know that I've missed a lot and I don't want people to feel like they're being ignored. Uh, thank you guys, everybody, for a sub. When's the YouTube video coming out? Soon, man. It will hopefully come out tomorrow. I'm not sure. Uh, hey, I'm starting my Dark Iron Dwarf fast. Uh, which legendary is the most important? Which stat priority should I be running? Which spec should I be using? Fury? Stat priority? It depends on which you, uh, what you use for your, um, your Agrimar Stride. And your legendary should be Agrimar Stride and, um, uh, what is it? The Rathus. And you can also use Sefu Signet, depending on what you're doing. Uh, not really a real storm mount, more like a bonus mount to your usual game time. Well, that's kind of the way that I saw it, too. I didn't really think it was a big deal. So, I, I'm not too stressed out about trading away gear in your bags. is the worst thing you're not getting loot via loot council. It means your bags was once yours. Loot council means it was never used to begin with, so it doesn't feel as bad if you don't get it. I, I know agony, and it's just Blizzard... It's like whenever they... It's like, imagine... Okay, imagine if, like, your hand hurts... And Blizzard's like, okay, well, we're going to cut off your hand. It's like, well, now I have an even bigger problem. Because I don't have a hand. That's basically what they do. Is there's like one issue and they just, they, they over adjust. So I really, I don't want to see that. What are your thoughts on Warfronts and Autism Expeditions? Uh, I think they're a booty hole. Uh, we'll, we'll see about Warfronts. I'll probably do Warfronts after this, actually. So I'll be able to uh, experience it myself. Was inspired by you to clean my whole house. Thank you, Asma Clean. Nice from thing, which for three hours. I appreciate that. Um, Asma, nobody special. You're just a random guy. I want to say thanks for all the entertainment you provide and hope you feel better and sort everything out soon. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Landfrix. Thank you very much for the vibe. You're really telling me that you're not using one best slot. Glad Sphero isn't the fucking best in the slot. Raptor King Helmet. Yeah, yeah, it's not really a big deal, Baron. Uh, but thanks, so. Appreciate the five. If you clean your roommate, yes, I have. Thank you very much, Swag Donalds. Still are carbonated water. Thank you very much to the 30. Uh, or three dollars. Um, Akari. Um, just still water. Okay, I've gotten everybody. Let's go through this video. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in and joining us for this live stream today. So, slightly different format. You may notice... Josh isn't up here with me. Um, this isn't uh, Q and A like the usual format. We have a lot of we still have a lot to talk about. An ongoing conversation about you know how things are going in the live game, plant changes, yep. upcoming tuning, a wide range of issues that's going to continue in a lot of different formats, whether it's on our forums, social media, or streams like this. Okay. Today, however, I'm excited to talk about what's coming next in Battle for Azeroth Copfield, content thank you, does miss. So, so far. You know, we've had Horde and Alliance that kicked off this expansion just over a month ago with yes. massive, you know, massive battles, massive war. And Alliance really suffered a number of heavy losses. Not massive, because if you bring more than 40 people into the zone, it will crash. Losses throughout that process. Of course, the tree at Teldrassil was burned down. 
They thought they had the upper hand at the Battle for Lordaeron, the Undercity, but victory was snatched, sorry, defeat was snatched from the jaws of victory yes. as you know, the Horde left the city in ruins behind them. And recently, you know, the Horde has been making incursions into Arathi Highlands and so forth. Now, it's time, however, for the Alliance to strike back. And oh, so boy. We had this initial war that broke out, and since then, we've moved on to Kul Tiris, to Zandalar, in search of new allies. And a lot of what we've been doing recently is, you know, working with Jaina, working with Talanji, working with the new friends that we've made, the folks that we've met. Ooh, feminism. And for some, that larger conflict in the Horde Alliance, unless you play in war mode, may feel a bit more removed, a bit more distant, because we've been solving the problems with Blood Trolls and Sethrak and the Drust and the minions of Queen Ashara and so forth. Yeah. But that's all about to change. So I'm excited to announce the first major wow. content update for Battle for Azeroth. Tides of Vengeance. And I want to talk about what exactly this is going to entail, what you can expect. So first off, oh. we have a lot of just core quest-driven, story-driven content in our outdoor world and elsewhere. Damn. The war That's campaign badass. will, of course, continue. We're going to have additional chapters that continue to tell the story of the Alliance build-up, the Horde build-up, as having laid their initial plans, they now make more heavy inroads into enemy terror. Sorry, I've got to pause this. Does Sarfang have earrings on his tooth are we at that point now and wow where we've run out of fucking real estate and he's got to put earrings on his goddamn tooth <laughs> man i've got a lot in common with this guy territory and really look to undermine the opposition we also have um Incursions, which are a new feature that are reminiscent to some extent of Legion assaults that we had back in patch 7.2 during Legion, where instead of you know the demons raining from the sky, there are going to be situations where an Alliance landing force has arrived in Tiragard Sound, and Ooh. they have carved out an area of control, they have ships with forces pouring in, this will turn off world quests or spawns on the area and enable a new set of content with a wrapper that can be completed once you've you know done enough of it. Very similar to how the Legion assaults were structured. Also, this will be okay. available. These world quests will be available for any leveling alts that have already unlocked world quests. Again, as a way to sort of boost your leveling, vary the experience from the zones you may have already played through. So invasions. We also are going to have a number of new world quests just wow. added to the rotation throughout the world. Additional wow. variety, additional depth to that existing system that wow. Battle for Azeroth launched with. Wow. Also excited to continue some existing storylines and introduce brand new ones. Uh, in Battle for Azeroth, we, we delved into Jaina's backstory and oh. what it meant for her to return to her homeland after this period of, of effective exile. We saw a little bit about what might have happened to the spirit of Vol'jin. I know there's a lot of people's uh, paychecks riding on this, and there's the uh, audio problem. I, I think I might have a solution to it. Let me know if this is going to fix it. But there's much more to tell on all of these fronts. Sorry. I was wrong. We're going to be looking very closely at Sarfang, whom as members oh. of the Horde we last saw languishing in the Stormwind Stockades, lamenting lost honor. Tyrande, what does she feel and what is she doing? What are she and Malfurion doing in the aftermath of seeing their homeland, of seeing Good question. burn before their eyes? And yes, what is everyone's favorite urn up to? And what will, what has become a Vol'jin? And is there a future for it? Everyone's favorite this urn. This is more going to be explored oh, I see. in Tides of Vengeance, the coming content update. Now, Heritage Armor. So, thus far, oh. Heritage Armor has been a reward for Allied Who's races. that Pokemon? Um, but what if, you know, we've heard from a number of players that it's awesome having this set of Transmog gear that really feels like it expresses your racial identity. And it's amazing to see, you know, the Void Elf, Maghar, Orcs, and others have this suit of armor. I'm pretty sure it's Ragnaros. Well, what if some other races could get that too? Good. And wow. so we're happy to introduce a couple of quest lines in... Tides of Vengeance Woo! that will allow initially dwarves and blood elves to I really explore like this, their uh... racial heritage and earn a suit of armor custom made for them that they can show off to the world. This is badass. Uh, don't worry, there's no you know massive rep grind or anything behind this. Uh, this is just if you are a max level character and you are exalted with your own capital city, which is a relatively easily attainable rep. So if you're a dwarf, you're exalted with Ironforge. Or even you add can it just in. Log in, jump right into this quest line, and 
delve into a bit of your history and earn this reward. Well, I guess showing. that's okay. Yeah, We're just doing these all first right. two races for now, but this is something we look to continue to build on, just as we are with allied races, because I think racial identity is a really important aspect of World of Warcraft, and anything we can do to strengthen the connection wow. people feel with their characters Jeez. is something we're excited about. All and right, community. There are amazing stories to explore, like on the Blood Elf side, for example, the you know massive dead scar that runs up and down the land towards Silvermoon. Not many players may know that that was actually you know the result of a scourge invasion led by the Lich King himself. But we'll be able to delve back into those events, relive a bit of that story as Blood Elves come to understand how they ended up where they are and what it means. That's to cool. Be I like Blood that. We also have a new Warfront. So as I mentioned, oh. uh, the Alliance suffered some heavy blows in the initial events of Battle for Azeroth, but now it's time for them to strike back. Oh. And so this is actually going to be the Night Elven forces and the Alliance as a whole looking to retake Darkshore, looking to reestablish a foothold in Kalimdor, within striking distance of Orgrimmar, looking to reclaim their ancestral homelands. Now this warfront is going to really be very heavily themed around Night Elves versus Forsaken. Makes sense. And so that means you know, new structures, new upgrades, new systems. You can construct and summon large ancients of war and ballistas and the full range of units that you would expect in the traditional Warcraft 3 style Okay. for Night Elves and Forsaken okay. to muster. Now of course there are going to be Horde and Alliance like participants as well, but you know, this is a very different look on, a very different take on the Warfront experience. And of course, you know, given the structure, this is going to be one that Alliance starts out attacking at the very start because these lands are by default held by the Horde. So when this update comes out, the Alliance will be able to jump right into donating, going in, getting access to, you know, all of the loot that's involved in the Warfront experience. And just as we did with the Rathi Highlands, we're also going to be updating the outdoor zone of Darkshore as a max level experience. Oh, that's awesome. That we'll have quests and rares and, yeah, I, I like and that. things to do for the faction in particular that controls the zone yeah, at the time. I, I, I like when I do so this. That it means something to know that your faction controls the area. And even if okay. you don't have the Warfront at the time, you have access to this outdoor content there. Now, Warfront's obviously a new type, Good of, job, Dewa. A new type of feature, a Good new idea. type of content that we've introduced in Battle for Azeroth. We're, of course, continuing to expand as well upon you know, islands. Um, we're going to have two new islands coming in Battle for Azeroth in Tides of Vengeance. So first, Jarendal is a Vrykul-themed island full of looming ancient Vrykul ruins and mysteries to explore, as well as Havenwood, uh, which is a gloomy, abandoned Gilnean city that looms and towers over this island, giving it a gothic vibe, a bit more civilized than a lot of the islands that we've come across so far. And players will jump in, explore it in search of Azerite, of course. What about the game? Now, gameplay? as we look at the island system as a whole, we're not just adding two new islands. We're also okay. learning from a lot of the feedback that we've gotten in the last month since the game has gone. Oh, this is about me. And our own experiences playing the game and continuing to improve the underlying system. I mean, an area that's a major focus for the team is adding significantly more variety, adding new events, new exciting things that you can come across that more meaningfully deliver on the idea that each experience is going to be different from the last. So look for things like holdouts that you can trigger, or Azerite, extraction, uh, Azerite extractors that you might set up and defend on behalf of your faction that give you a slow trickle of Azerite while you control them. Ooh, I like that. The enemy forces recapturing them th th and yeah, them that, over to their side. That's a really good idea. Away, I like that. Making the island a bit more dynamic rather than giving you okay. sense that, okay, you've cleared out this area. There's yeah, no that's good. Back. Now, underlying all of this, we're looking at the broader systems, and that means both rewards, but also the way the islands are spawned in general. Mm. Now, we have some major spawning improvements coming to islands in Tides of Vengeance, where it's not just going to be... We want to move a bit away from the feeling that the islands can be uniformly blanketed with spawns by whatever, you know, whatever enemies are currently occupying them, and a bit more of a feel that better reflects the traditional flow of World of Warcraft gameplay, where there are more tightly clustered hubs that are more likely to have rares and treasures and things to do there and more gaps more navigability of the island as a whole between those hubs so more clustering and i think in our, in our internal play tests thus that, far that that probably is a good idea an immediate improvement on the overall feel yeah We're looking forward to letting people jump in on the public test realm and check this out so you don't have like mobs chasing now, everywhere aside from new stuff we also have traditional mainstays of wow content and so tides of vengeance is also going to be bringing a new large raid zone to World of Warcraft. Now, this is quite different from any raid we've done before. Uh -huh. um, really historically, this so the raid is Siege of Zuldazar. Um, name, not necessarily final, but location, definitely final. 
historically in World of Warcraft, the way the big bad villain is expressed is often as a raid boss, right? Whether it's you know Burning Crusade facing Illidan in the Black Temple, or Wrath of the yes. Lich King, you eventually ascend Ice Crown Citadel and you fight the Lich King himself. That's the ultimate expression of combat against a foe. True. Well, here, if the foe is the opposite faction, many players have rightly noticed, hey, we've been spending a lot of time fighting the forces of Gahoon. What about the Alliance? What about the Horde? Well, that's all about to change. Because the enemy in this raid is the opposite faction. And what that means is a bit of a unique take on, on what a raid can be in World of Warcraft. We actually have two completely separate experiences, whether you're Alliance or whether you're Horde. It's like Siege of Boralus. So the story here, some slight spoilers, but this will all be data mined soon enough. So one of the big, you know, one of the big things that the Alliance War okay. campaign, the war effort is building towards, is this strike, uh, a first strike, a preemptive attack on the Zandalari fleet, on the city of Zoldazar, to cripple the new Horde Alliance and make sure that the Alliance maintains the upper hand. And so all of the events are leading to this. And so you, as an Alliance player, will join Jaina, join the Horde for the Alliance forces, Ooh. land in the harbor at Zoldazar, fight your way through the city, up into the pyramid, including a new inside of the pyramid that we haven't seen before, eventually ascending to the top to confront King Rastakhan. Oh! Meanwhile, Horde players... I hate him. ...learning that the Alliance is attacking their city will rush to its defense, beginning on the far northern side of the pyramid, in the jungles of Zoldazar, as they fight through the pyramid, fight through Alliance attackers. And for them, the events around Rastakhan are actually just a midway point. And the rest of the Horde raid is them actually fighting back down towards the harbor through Alliance forces, fighting different bosses, the remains of the Alliance attack, and eventually culminating in a battle against Alliance commanders, including Jaina herself, on the high seas. Oh! So two separate six-boss experiences. Jaina better not die. Now, after that, we also want to give players a chance to see the other side of the story. So once you've finished this raid in its entirety, you'll return to what remains of Zoldazar, or if you're Alliance, you'll return to Boralus, where you will learn from scouts, from soldiers who are on the front lines, what happened in your absence. As, as a Horde player, well, well, what did the Alliance do before we got there? And as if, through the vehicle of them retelling the story, you'll be able to experience the three bosses on the other faction's side that you didn't get to witness firsthand. And so what okay. that means is, whether you're Horde, whether you're Alliance, you'll have a total of nine boss encounters as you go through this raid. And this is you know, telling the story of That's the very real conflict in the Horn Alliance in a way that we've never done before. Um, we've had you know the occasional faction champions type fight, or I mean, really, even in Siege of Orgrimmar, it was both factions sieging Orgrimmar Three shared bosses, because they I had think, a common yeah. enemy in Garrosh. Very, very different story here. We also have a second raid. Um, the, this, is, this one's going to be coming a little bit later on. Oh. But this raid's called the Crucible of Storms. It's a two-boss raid. Oh, shit. Okay. the Shrine of the Storm in Stormsong Valley. I like it. And begins to hint at some of nice. the secrets behind the Kathir, the influence of Queen Ashara, and more that Alliance players in particular have, have begun to uncover there, but that we're going to need to deal with. We're going to need to I like this. After we've stamped out the corruption of Gahoon on Zandalar. Kultiris has more than a few problems of its own. Yeah. And so this is going to serve the role of sort of a Trial of Valor type raid. Um, the, the thought is that this will be available a, fair, a bit decent bit after Zoldazar. You know, we don't want to overload players with too much raid content. Of course you know, not. People right now are probably you know, hearing this and thinking, like not even halfway through Uldir, but don't worry. We're going to, as we did in Legion, we want to make sure continuing a steady stream of content. Wow. The release of which we pace out so that you're not overwhelmed, but also not feeling like you're waiting too long for the next thing. And we will have supporting world content and a quest line. Oh, I so like around that. Around the time that this opens, there'll be other Naga invasions and Naga themed world quests around the shores and coastlines of the new continents. And we want to make sure that everyone understands why they're going into this place, especially Horde players who may lack the context of having played through Stormsong Valley themselves. So tons of exciting new raid content coming next in Tides of Vengeance. Now, of course, aside from the big pieces of content, our first major content update also gives us a chance to really dig into various systems updates and improvements. This is a lot of the stuff that we've been discussing that was touched on in the AMA on Reddit last week. Um, we've been doing some class tuning on you know, via Hotfix. That is still very much ongoing. We have a couple more passes based on all the robust data that we've been seeing on the live servers. Um, but 
a patch represents a chance for us to really dig into talent trees and rotations a bit more and look at a handful of specs that still have some you know significant problems based on our own perspective based on feedback we've heard from the community and try to try to address those more directly so they're going to nerf as warriors well as ongoing numerical balancing that we've been doing to azurite traits that will continue we're also going to add a bunch of new azurite traits that oh. will be found on gear from the zoldazar raid and more as well as just some general replacements for azurite traits that have been less interesting or less effective on some Couldn't specs. Couldn't that so replace far. the old gear? And again, the goal is to learn from. Could pitch and all players and only doing the same stuff? Have been and continue to Could raise be bad. The bar there. You know, I think what we've seen in the first wave of traits is something of a floor we'll in terms of overall complexity and overall you know level of engagement. We're looking to continue to add depth and expand and grow from there. That's not too different from how set bonuses used to work. In the past, were often the first tier set bonuses were relatively simple because classes had changed, people were still figuring things out, and we weren't looking to layer on too much complexity right away. There'll be new profession recipes, uh, Nomergon Pet Battle Dungeon for pet battle enthusiasts out there who've been wondering when the next chapter in that dungeon saga is going to Ooh, be. And boy. Ideas, you know, everything from map improvements That's what to it's actually, about. Uh, reputations, something that has been touched on a lot in discussion recently. I love it. Um, we already had plans in the works to make yes. the champions of Azeroth reputation effectively account wide when it comes to the upgrades. That was a very good change. Azeroth itself. Great change. So in Tides of Vengeance you'll be able to just log in and if you have an alt that's already revered with Magni you can just go get those upgrades right away when you hit 120. And we've also been hearing a lot of feedback especially in the last few days about some of the things that make reputation inconvenient when you're playing alts or looking at switching characters. I think one of the big ones there uh, is transmog, actually. There are a number of rep-restricted items on vendors and other sources around the world, where if you, you know, I think the almost silly, ironic example is if you're exalted with the High Mountain Tauren and you unlock and make a High Mountain Allied race, your, high, your new High Mountain Tauren can't use that tabard because they're not yet exalted with High Mountain, and it has that requirement. So we're actually going to be making a change to That's pretty dumb. Much remove those restrictions on faction-based wow. transmogs across the game. Okay. Once you've earned it, That's good. everyone on your account can use it. You don't have to worry about having to re-earn that. Separately, and another pain point has been for completionists who are working towards oh, the big achievements, me. like 60, 70, 80 exalted reputations. That's uh, it? We're going to make progress towards that achievement truly account-wide. So if you have only 80 on character A and 20 different reps on character B, oh, that'll geez. actually add up to the Com 90. You know, completionists. Being unable to switch characters Clown. because of your past investment. And yeah, we'll make sure that Horde and Alliance exclusive reps don't double count. So it's That's not good. nerfing the achievement, it's more just raising accessibility as a whole. Okay. Um, one thing I just wanted to address, that, actually, that is good. thought of this while while talking. I know Ooh. the number of people who are wondering where Kul Tiran and Zandalari are. Um, we talked about them in the past. It's oh, not how I'd race. How I'd race. We're not quite yet there in the story, but they're very, very close. Uh, I think in the events following the raid, that's where this bond between our new allies and our factions will truly be forged and where we'll be able to recruit and bring the Kul Tiran and the Zandalari formally into our factions. Okay. I know if you're, wonder if you're worrying or wondering about this, you're not going to have to rep up with some new faction. If you are you know, exalted with the Proudmoor Admiralty or Zandalari Empire and you've done the war campaign, that's enough. You've played through the story, you've earned their alliance, they will come join your faction, but that's not going to so, happen until after the raid. So that's, that's a requirement. Okay, so, got it. When is this coming? The goal, the goal is, you know, fingers crossed, uh, the Tides of Vengeance update, we want to have on the public test realm by it, the end of the week. It's a Twitch so, Prime elemental. Be data mining out Look. there, people jumping onto the servers as soon as they go up, and there's a lot more that I didn't even begin to touch on. There's, you know, a lot of tiny changes, a lot of new art assets, things that you'll be seeing soon, but we're incredibly excited to share this with you. And again, just to recap, we have a new Warfront, two new raids, two new islands, Island improvements, heritage armor for non-allied races, That's good. broader systems improvements, and more. Can't more. wait to see you in the public test realm. Can't wait for everyone to jump on and check it out. Again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and we have a whole lot more to discuss in the future when it comes to Battle for Azeroth as a whole. But when it comes to the story, when it comes to the content in the game, we have every, you know, we're viewing the Legion patch plan as our template. And that's what we want to carry forward. We always want to make sure the world is evolving, the story is evolving, the things you have to do in the game are evolving, and that the content is well-paced. Okay. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you all later.
He didn't say peace. That's too bad. So, uh... Like, I, I guess this was fine. I mean, like, everything seems good about this. There's nothing... Uh, I genuinely like Ian and the transparency of the dev team. Yeah. Um, great to see a new chunk already for BFA. That seems awesome. Thank you for the small update. Okay, that's good. Probably the biggest and best announcement for me is reputation achievement is going to count wide. Jesus, I freaked out, finally. Oh, he's got a... Nah, okay, he's got a shadow to, Okay, yeah, I got it. Although there's been a lot of criticism for BFA at the moment, I've really enjoyed it so far. I'm really hyped for 8.1. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. I, I mean, the thing is, people just want new content. They always want new content. The issue is that people go through the content too fucking fast and Blizzard can't make it fast enough. If Blizzard made a new expansion every week, people would be happy because they'd never run out of shit to do. But the issue is that right now, because access, the barrier to entry with so much content is so low, they're just going to run out of time, and they're just going to finish basically everything really, really fast, and then they run out of content in two weeks. Uh, that's what happens. Sponsored comments? Oh, these aren't sponsored comments. Let's see. Let's find one that's not sponsored. Um... Damage control time. Okay, here we go. It's too late, sadly. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There's somebody who's pissed off. Who, wh where's another one? There's got to be somebody else who's mad. Please fix Prot Warriors. I'm going to give this guy a thumbs up. Let's see. Hype is real. Oh, yeah. Like, so, I, I mean, obviously, you know, obviously, you know, like, it could be better, but I'm happy with what they're saying. Like, I really like that they're already adding two more raids. I think that's awesome. And I'd like to see more raids added into the game in general. I, I think raiding is really important. But uh, that that's about it. Watch the Heal vs. Babyface video. Isn't that like all of his videos are what they're like my videos? They're just super long. Um, I, I kind of want to do a few other things before I watch more videos, but I just want to see... Uh, I want to see what all this is. Let's communicate. Blizzard and the community need to talk. Emergency as number 35. Blizzard hit the panic button. So, this is something, uh, Heels is mad. Yeah, yeah. The second one. Uh, there's nothing like, oh, there, there actually, there is content on the screen. Okay. Uh, watch Jordan Peterson video. Okay, alright, relax, bro. Just a second. So, I'll watch like the first minute or two of this and then I'll uh, I'll go back but yeah I mean the Tides of Vengeance thing obviously it's awesome everybody's looking forward to new content everybody's always looking forward to new content it's constant like yeah sure of course they're looking forward to it but at the same time it's not this doesn't it doesn't solve the underlying problem and I hope that Blizzard starts realizing that after they keep putting out they're putting out a huge amount of content and players just don't give a fuck because it doesn't it doesn't fulfill them. And that's the issue. Panic button, he reckons. The first month of BFA is over, the AMA was a mess, and the dev live chat didn't impress. Now Blizzard looks to exploit its player base by hitting the panic button. So, based off of that description... My assumption is that he is not happy with the current state of the game. 